thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, I'm Don Andrews. I'm your manager of member services at Cindy. Uh, we're really happy that you're joining us today and thank you for your time. So uh, we're in for a really interesting webinar today from Dr. Rippy Singh and Dr. Johannes Vrena. Uh, it's NDE 4.0, why, what, and how. And without further ado, I'll introduce your presenters today. So we'll start with Dr. Johannes Vrena. Uh, Dr. Johannes studied physics, uh, completed his diploma thesis on atom photon entanglement and his PhD in thermography. He worked for Siemens with responsibility for all supplier related NDE system qualification, specification harmonization and statistical evaluation of results. In addition, he was chairman of the Siemens NDE council uh, and he was awarded at the US Excellence and Werner von Siemens Awards. So in 2015, he started Vrana GmbH which specializes in non-destructive evaluation consulting and solutions, R&D training and software development. Uh, he's chairman of the ICNDT uh, special interest group NDE 4.0 of the DGZFP subcommittees, uh, interfaces for NDE 4.0 and autom automated ultrasonic testing uh, and is editor for NDE 4.0 uh, of the Journal of NDE. In 2019, uh, he was awarded with the DGZFP application award for the implementation of SAFT into serial production. And we also have with us Dr. Rippy Singh. Uh, Dr. Rippy Singh is a pur purposeful innovation coach, author, keynote speaker, advisor, and strategist with four years of experience and 30 years of learning. He has always been passionate about developing people and technologies to tackle problems worth solving. His current focus is on creating innovation management tools and processes and other application to infrastructural safety through NDE 4.0. Rippy serves on various ad, uh, advisory boards, US delegation to TC279 on innovation management and CT Academy of Science and Engineering. Rippy has earned president of India prize for outstanding research amongst numerous other national recognitions and scholarships, which led to his acceptance as US citizen under the category of persons of extraordinary ability slash outstanding professors and researchers. Rippy is a, an author of four books and over 100 peer review publications and dozens of keynote lectures. With that intro, welcome Dr. Rippy Singh and Dr. Johannes. Good afternoon. I hope you can all hear me today. We are just coming out of a bit of a snowstorm here in Connecticut and things are now opening up. Uh, if you hear a little noise in the background, it's because of all the snow removal trucks and my neighbors trying to clear the driveway and all that stuff. So please excuse me for that. Fortunately, we did not have a power outage and I'm so glad to be here with you this fine afternoon. And I hope you are now getting into the Christmas mood season and ready to bid 2020 goodbye as a year which brought some mixed challenges for all of us. Amidst those challenges also came about the opportunities for Industry 4.0 and more so its application to the NDE the world of NDE 4.0, as my friend Johannes would say over here. So today, let's quickly go over the why, what, and how of this confluence of digital technologies with the NDE world. I will take about 10 minutes, share with you our joint perspective on why we need to pursue NDE 4.0. Then I'll give it to Johannes, who will take about 15 minutes and share with you what does it actually mean to do NDE 4.0 in terms of technologies, in terms of applications and connect it with the why that I will share with you now. And then I'll come back uh, for another 10 minutes and share with you how we actually get on this journey of transforming ourselves from the third revolution to the fourth revolution, the digital transformation, so to say. So with that, let me start with how we got together. Uh, Johannes started NDE 4.0 in 2017 in Germany. I brought this thing up at ASNT in 2018 spring. Uh, and then actually ASNT asked us to start uh, to try a session together. And from the very first meeting we hit it off. Since then we have been together and we've been building on each other's competencies, network, strength, 
running conferences together. And this particular year, again, thanks to COVID in some sense, we managed to do a lot of Zoom meetings around NDE 4.0, engaging uh, community globally to, to get us to an understanding and get us to walk together through this challenge. So we are now beginning to look at NDE 4 as an ecosystem uh, and the global community is planning to bring to you all a guidance on how to adopt this transformation sometime middle of next year. Here is just an example of all the people from 17 different countries who have come together. One of the big meetings we had, um, we'll go more about this uh, towards the end of the talk today. What is the fourth industrial revolution? Most of us by now know what it is. The first one started with steam power in, instead of animals. Now you got machines that can pull a lot bigger loads, a little bit faster. The second revolution was powered by electricity, mass production, factories. The third revolution happened because of the computers. We started getting more into automation, electronics, everything became small, became portable. And the fourth revolution is very interesting. In a sense, if you think of it, second revolution taught us how to deal with material. Third revolution taught us how to deal with data. The fourth revolution is now bringing data and materials together. It's bringing the digital world and the physical world closer to each other. It's the cyber physical systems. Autonomous car is a classic example. What does it mean to inspections? From inspection perspective, the revolutions are not exactly in the same timeline as industrial revolution. Johannes has educated me on, you know, revolution is when it changes the way you do things. So we could say NDE zero was when we used human senses, vision, hearing, taste to figure out what's going on. NDE one is when we actually amplified those senses. So even dye penetrant, uh, mag particle, uh, magnifying glass, stethoscope, they will all be a part of NDE one. It's still human senses, but we had a way to amplify reality and be able to see that. NDE two is when we were able to go deep into the material, x-rays, ultrasonics, eddy current. NDE three, things became digital with computers. And NDE four, now we are talking an overlap of digital physical reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, drones coming in. So that's what is coming into the fourth revolution. Talking about why, what, and how of these, okay? Why, let me start with why. We want safety. We all want to operate safely. We do not want to see accidents of this type happen. We must find the flaw in the disk before it can kill somebody in the air. That's the primary motivation for NDE. Now NDE 4, in some sense, you can think of as two classes of why. Bringing digital technologies into NDE to enhance capability reliability, to be effective and efficient with inspections to even improve the NDT equipment, to make, keep the inspector away from harm's, harm's way, right? Don't let him go into a hazardous location. Let the robot go and take the sensor and do the inspection. And then of course, you can also use the data that you get from NDE in a factory, in a shop floor environment to assure quality of brand new products, to assure quality of 3D printed parts, you know, product design improvement. So both in terms of NDE, for industry 4.0 and then industry 4.0 for NDE are two big classes of why you want to pursue this. How they all come together, you know, most of the time, whenever we run a project or we make an improvement, you have to choose between quality, speed, and cost. Most projects will tell you you can control two, third one is a dependent parameter. You cannot move all three in the positive direction at the same time. Not really possible. However, when you are going through a revolution, it is possible. And that's what NDE4 can do. It can actually allow you to do inspections faster, assure things which are even safer, and also reduce cost of doing it. In next step, you might even get to a point where instead of you spending money on doing NDE, you might actually derive data that brings more value 
than what you spent on doing NDT. So it could become cost positive even. Imagine how over the years the safety has changed. We have gone from long ago putting factors of safety, right? I remember the first set of bridges 200 years ago, factor of safety 10, buildings factor of safety six, even early aircraft factor of safety two. Our safety was being assured by capturing the ignorance under the term factor of safety. Then we learned a little bit better. We started talking about safe life, fail safe, because we understood failure mechanism. Then we got into damage tolerance, which is essentially driven by NDE capability. Going forward, the fourth revolution can take us to prescriptive handling, prescriptive inspection, prescriptive maintenance, which means it's not just about predicting, it's also understanding every piece of asset and specifically giving a prescription, just like doctors prescribe different medicines to different patients, we can do NDE where it is prescribed for every asset separately. Imagine you have a physical asset and then there's a digital twin to the physical asset. Digital twin is a computer model. Johannes will explain more about that. You capture the data all the way from the conception through manufacture, all the way up to operation and the latest inspection for that asset onto its digital twin. You bring that data and the data from other digital twins, other assets to do damage progression, to simulate damage growth, to actually make predictions on what if scenarios with that particular asset. Once you know in depth what is happening with that specific airplane or engine or power plant or that asset item, you prescribe what to do and not do, how to maintain repair that particular asset. You know, so this brings up lots of things. It brings efficiency, effectiveness, it extends the life of that asset. It brings economic value to the asset owner. It brings the data that asset OEMs can use to further improve the asset design. And all of that value essentially can be generated. Think of it like money. Think of it like what else can it bring to you? This cyber physical human loop creates NDE move from a cost center to a value creation activity. You know, it's not going to be anymore, oh, NDE is costly and we have to spend money to assure safety. No, you can actually generate value while assuring safety. That's the big difference between three and four, okay? So it is assuring you safety solutions as well as the economic value, both in terms of safety for the inspectors and the asset users and economic value for almost everyone in the ecosystem. We just uh, have this paper that has come out in Cindy Journal. Uh, it came out last week uh, for 2020, which even delves into the details of how you as a part of an NDE ecosystem can derive value through NDE 4.0. With that, I will close on the topic of why NDE 4.0, essentially it's for safety and economic value. And I will now pass it on to Johannes to share with you what does it contain. Johannes, on to you. So welcome to the world of NDE 4.0, also from my side. Um, Rippy already talked a lot about the why of NDE 4.0. I will take you a little bit on the what, on the technical side of NDE 4.0. But really before we get there, there is one vocabulary I want to discuss with you. And that is, come on, the word digital. And there are two verbs in the English language, digitization and digitalization. In most other languages, those two have no differentiation, including German, Spanish, and Japanese. And, but even if I talk to some native English speakers, they don't really know the differentiation. But I think for this fourth revolution, this is really important to know because digitization 
That is just the conversion of some analog information into a digital information. Meaning I take a sheet of paper, I put it in my scanner, I produce a JPEG out of it or a PDF and store it on my computer. That is digitization. Problem with that is once I digitized that document, actually the real content which is in the document which is all the numbers which are written on that document is kind of lost. Now, digitalization, this is now taking us on the road to the fourth revolution because digitalization, this is really, okay, making your processes digital. So no, not anymore sending you an email to tell you, okay, please do this inspection. No, it is two systems communicating and you get a screen which tells you, oh, please inspect this component and already shows you the details to the component and perhaps the specifications. And later on, you enter all your information back into that system. And then finally, we get to the digital transformation. This is coming to the point where, okay, now that we are getting our task for a information from a digital system, we enter our information back into that system. That information is then stored on, let's say, a cloud. Then somebody from design engineering takes all of that information, converts it into something to enhance the design, and perhaps uses some AI from a fourth company. So you see, we are now getting into something where we have a lot of different puzzles acting together to create something bigger. And this is really what the fourth revolution is about. Now, but to start with small steps, the small steps is let's use the emerging technologies to enhance our NDE. For example, artificial intelligence to help us to gain, yeah, more easy to interpret results of our inspections. And if you're interested in all those others, then get into or get your Cindy paper or your Cindy channel and get into the paper. We have done quite some effort to describe all of them in, in that paper. Now, this is for me use case number one, using all those emerging technologies for the benefit of NDE, to enhance our NDE method, which is a very valuable business case for the NDE industry. Then there is a second one, inspection support. So imagine you are out there somewhere on a big chimney and you have to do some inspection and you need some support. Yeah, then some remote support, remote NDE, that's the tool perhaps you wanna have. Improving NDE equipment. Yeah, if your NDE equipment would be able to actually tell the manufacturer of the equipment of all the problem you were facing all over the time with let's say the software was crashing or the hardware had some malfunction or something like that, then actually the manufacturer of the system would have some data which could help him to improve the system so that you finally get a better system. And then there is this box which I call inspection control 4.0. So we already talked about establishing digital workflows, but it goes further into digital commissioning, digital supply chain processes, making sure our component traceability, ensuring life cycle records, and also going into performance statistics. Perhaps we do not have to take care of all those records anymore for our next certification, but the systems do it automatically. And all those use cases, they're all for the benefit of our jobs, for the benefit of us as NDE persons. And this is all using industry 4.0 technology for NDE. So this is what we call it. But Rippy already mentioned it. There is a second big group of use cases. And a couple of months ago, I actually asked on social media, about, okay, what have you heard on negative things about NDE? And there was one reply I, 
I didn't agree with, but I liked it a lot because it shows the way out. And it's this one. NET does not have any value at all. It only sorts out parts that in reality are good. I don't want it. I would never ever do it, but my customer insists on it. I would prefer spending the money into further improvement of my production. But this customer really sees that NDT is a cost center and adds no value at all. <laughs> I really do not agree with that opinion, but this is how some customers see it. And, but this customer also, even that he doesn't know, he already shows us what he wants to have. He wants to improve his production. But what he doesn't see that all the NDE he is already doing in his factory, hmm, that could be something which could help him to improve his production. But what does he do with all the results he gets from all of the NDE? Like most of us, he puts it in an archive or he scans it and puts the PDFs into some electronic archive. So this is information which is lost. This is information nobody can use. And this is where we really have to take on the road to NDE 4.0. And how do we do that? In my eyes, NDE can be the data source needed by industry 4.0. So what we have to do, we have to interact with industry 4.0. And we can do that by using the so-called industrial internet of things. Now, what hinders us a little bit are all our proprietary interfaces, but I will come to that in a second. So let's get one step back to the industrial production like we know it, to the third revolution. And that third revolution is really painted by this automation stack, where we are doing the planning of our production in an ERP system, and which is the enterprise resource planning. And then this is broken down to our production floor. And on production floor, we are producing something. Now we collect a lot of data. And what will we do with the data? We combine it back until it reaches the ERP system. And finally, we store the data in the ERP system. That's the idea of the third revolution. So what do we need? We need interfaces from one layer to the next, but there are two major issues in this model. Number one, we have thousands and thousands of those PLCs and every NDE device can be seen as one PLC. And each of those PLCs is produced by an OEM and has its own proprietary, uh, its own proprietary interface. So, therefore, most of the information which is in the PLCs is not getting transferred into the SCADA system. And actually, between SCADA and MES, we have a bigger problem because here we're using actually routing sheets on paper in most cases. So you can imagine if we already use a routing sheet going from the MES to SCADA, what happens with the data we collected in the SCADA system. Yeah, they print it, scan it, and put it into the MES system. So again, we have lost the data. So kind of what we can say, this system is broken. And therefore, we need a new solution. And, but besides that, industrial production doesn't start with production. It starts with an initial idea for a product with the design of a product, for example, in a CAD system. Then we have a lot of production, which is actually not in our own factories, but it is at some suppliers. So we also want to have the data from the suppliers within our system. We have some product lifecycle management. We have maintenance later on. We have, perhaps we have structural health monitoring, digital twins, or a cloud. And we want all of that connected. And this is really where we are getting into the industrial internet of things. Let's get rid of the automation stack. And instead, let's build up the IOT, where everything can communicate with everything else using standardized open interfaces. 
Now, where do we have NDE in this picture? Yeah, NDE we have actually structural health monitoring is NDE. We have NDE in production, we have NDE in maintenance, we have NDE in supply chain management. But what do we do with all of those results? Yeah, we put them in archives. So, and that is the point we need to change. We have to become one of the core players of the IAOT. Like you see it here, we are now a core player in the IAOT. We have to implement the interfaces which are necessary to get into the IAOT. And that is what we are currently working on. If you are interested in more details, how to establish this, get into the NDE 4.0 YouTube channel, and you will find a lot more detail. Now, what we need to get there is number one, we need structure of the data. We need to make the data machine readable. We need to convert the data into information. And so how do we do that? We need semantic interoperability. Now, seeing this number, I guess most of you will already know what this information is about. But a computer, if I just put, put the number 42 into the computer keyboard, the computer has no clue what this information is about. So it needs to have yeah, all the connection to that number. It needs to know, is it the length of a truck or the gain of the UT instrument? Which UT instrument was it before or after calibration and which day, which probe? And once I give the computer the information it needs to actually know what that information is about, then the computer will know, okay, this is actually the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything, at least according to Douglas Adams' book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Okay, now we have the IoT, we have semantic interoperability. So what to do with all that data? Here we are coming to the digital twin. I can do a digital twin about myself, a virtual representation of myself. And what do I need for a virtual representation of myself? I need a lot of data. Then we take all of the data we have collected about myself, and then we put that into some simulation. So for example, how will, uh, on which vacation will I go next? Or which book will I buy next? And then we have to take some action out of this information we have gained due to the simulation, either by showing it or by yeah, making some actions like Amazon showing us, okay, this is the book you want to buy next. And this is what all those companies already understood quite a while ago, that data has value, that especially information has value. So data with semantic interoperability. And actually our governments and our health insurance companies know, the, know it also. Now, digital twin, we do not have to do it just for ourselves. We can do it for about everything. We can do it for an inspection system. And what you can see here, uh, this gray area here or this gray box, and this is really our real asset. And the blue box around it, this is um, imaging our digital twin. We can do a digital twin of a production line and then have underneath the production line digital twin, we have one for, yeah, for somehow a mechanical uh, or ma machining system for our inspection system, for transporting system and so on. So we can nest those systems. Underneath the inspection system, perhaps we have some inspection equipment, detectors, probes, sensors, some software, and it can also be an inspector. But now if you think about it, all of those digital twins or all of those assets, those real assets and those digital twins are related to producing something. They're related to equipment you want to use to produce something, to make something. But there, is, there are different digital twins and those are the digital twins of your product. And with the product, we already spoke about, we start with the idea. 
we come to some design, we have some raw material, we get into production of some components, we have a product, we operate the product, and we get to the end of life. So we have two kinds of digital twins. Number one, we have those for, let's say the production, and we have the nesting. So one underneath on the other, kind of like a tree. And then we have here, this coming from the initial idea all the way to the end of life. And those two cross at some point, because this is exactly the point where we do the inspection at a certain component. Now this horizontal axis is called a digital thread and the vertical is called nesting. And in the beginning, we're talking about the type. And then once we start with the production, we are talking about a certain instance of that certain type of a product. And for all of that, we can create digital twins. We can also create a digital twin for our computer system or for whatever you want to use. Now, what do we do within that digital twin? Whatever digital twin it is we're speaking about. Digital twin has three parts to it. We have information, we have some simulation, we're getting into visualization and action. And information we are getting out of databases, out of clouds, out of the IoT, but it needs to be data with the necessary semantic interoperability and with reliability information. I need to know before I can process that data, how reliable is that information I'm using for the simulation? Then I'm getting into simulation. Here I can use a classical computer, NAI, a quantum computer, whatever. And it is to do trending, to do predictive maintenance, to do probabilistic life and whatever you can know. To finally do some visualization or to get it into actions by automatically, yeah, using a different path for your, for your robot. And best would be if all of this is done in real time. So coming back to that loop Rippy showed before in a perhaps a little bit different way. So we have our NDE data. We're putting it, we're creating the semantic interoperability, putting it, combining it with all other information in the IAOT, processing that data in a digital twin, then actually converting it into either information or some, into some visualization or into some action. And what happens is actually what we do with this loop. We take data, we convert it into information, we convert the information in the digital twin into knowledge, and finally we create some action out of it. And this is the physical to digital to physical loop. And this will help to move NDE from this unnecessary cost factor to perhaps the most valuable data source treasure for industry 4.0. All right, thank you, Johannes, for sharing with us what does NDE4 entail? Essentially, it's the combination of digital technologies with the physical NDE that we already know very well. Now, how do we accomplish this? Okay, what does it take to make it happen? It's a massive technology piece. And Johannes talked about system connectivity. He talks about all of the things that have to come together. They have to talk to each other. The number 42, when it goes from one machine to another machine there, you have to be able to understand, which means we need some kind of data exchange protocols, okay? We need to be able to handle data with speed or a bandwidth. We need data security, we need data analytics, and all of those technologies are still evolving. You remember what we learned from the third revolution. The internet came in late 60s, but it took almost 20 years before it really exploded until HTML became a popular protocol for exchange. So similarly, right now we need things like 5G to be able to handle all of that connectivity and protocols like HL7. All of that is happening and we need to develop those, adopt those, accept those, right? It's time that industry moves away from a lot of proprietary stuff and get into where systems can actually be connected. 
Now, developing the technology, it's a little bit risky. If you are an NDT OEM or you're a service provider or whatever, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a path that you have to go through from coming up with an idea to making it valuable to a customer. And I typically say it takes five steps. The first two are sort of interrelated whether you identify a need with the customer or you come up with an idea and then see how your customer can use it. So ideation and customer insight or user application insight, they kind of go in a loop. And you may generate hundreds of ideas, but not everything makes sense. So next question you ask, what's the value proposition? Which means, does this idea deliver something to the end user? If the answer is no, you stop there. If the answer is yes, you go to step four, which is, does this concept qualify from business perspective? Can we afford to do it? You know, sort of hundreds of ideas, only three or four may qualify as a concept worthy of doing, which can be done profitably and can derive, deliver value to the end customer. And if you get to that point, now you can launch a project. And, and then once the project is launched, just run it like a traditional technology phase gate process, and you will actually be able to develop something. But the whole system of uh, going through a structured innovation upfront is to rapidly generate a bunch of ideas and whittle down to what makes sense. And one of the things that I have talked a lot in the past, and I still say not just NDT, but everywhere is exploit mobile devices, take full advantage of smartphones. They have half the things that exist above our neck. You know, they got the eyes, the ears, the, the, the mouth, they got the memory, they got computing power, they got networking. They, a mobile device is like a wheel in the industry for auto. Whenever you conceive a new system, think about it. Put a mobile device in there and see what all can be removed from your system and just continue to use smartphones. Because somebody is developing these year over year, getting better and better. Why reinvent that wheel? And this is the wheel for the fourth industrial revolution. A big challenge we have to deal with is, is talent, is workforce training. Okay, Getting into NDE4 would need skills, which are a combination of NDE skills and digital skills. Okay, So you can take NDE people and train them on the digital side, or you can bring digital scientists and train them on NDE. You probably need to do both, okay? Because there are certain things about digital science which may not come all the way into uh, a good NDE personnel. And we just have to build those strong teams. That is absolutely important. With that, it changes the role of human from being an inspector to a controller of an automated inspection system, a programmer, somebody who validates devices, somebody who actually supervises those. So it might bring in a host of new challenges in terms of both psychological acceptance, co-working with robots. We have to be aware of that and we have to work with people as their roles change. It even creates a bit of a fear. People think that their jobs will be lost. And I always say jobs will not be lost. New jobs will be created the skills will become obsolete. One will have to think about retraining himself or herself to the new set of skills because this transformation is massive and we have to learn it. While this massive transformation is going on, there is another challenging area. That is when people innovate faster than law can keep up with and there's no experience, there's no precedence to learn from, okay? you get into this uncertain thing where you don't know what will happen. And then there are people, the business leaders who will make decisions based on legal risk, but you know, law has not caught up. So who's watching out for us in this particular area where all three things combine? We have seen so many cases, whether it's e-cigarettes or it's a Boeing 737 MAX problem. It's, it's that domain where we don't know yet but the greed can drive us to take certain decisions which may not be in the best interest of public. Should you ask simple questions? Is it right for the customer? Is it right for the business? 
Is it the right way to do? Can it hurt somebody else? That's a start, but that's not enough. I like what Department of Defense has given in terms of ethical principles for artificial intelligence. And the most important one I talked, they, they mentioned that I believe is governance. It says you design a system that fulfills an intended role, fulfills intended function. And also it has the ability to detect and avoid any unintended consequence, which means it's got to be smart enough to figure out that I'm not going out of the box over which I'm supposed to operate. And if it gets there and it realizes it's stepping out of the boundary, it should deactivate or shut down itself, right? We do not want a smart, intelligent device to go out of control and do things which harm. When the systems start learning, you know, it's like a child. An AI-driven NDE system will be like a child. It will start like an ASNT level one, level two, level three, almost. We are not gonna call it that. I don't know what we will call it, but it will have to be trained. And when it gets very good, we wanna make sure that it doesn't become too good for us to know what it is going to do. The workplace culture will have to change, whether you are a developer of a industry 4.0, NDE 4.0 equipment or a user, uh, we have to think about adoption. We have to overcome the fear of failure. We have to overcome resistance to change. Okay, and then of course, we also have to be conscious about not to become over dependent upon technology. It's easier, it's easier to feel good, it's to start with, but then humans, we have inertia, we have friction, and we have to work through a value proposition. Leadership style will have to change as we go through this. The hierarchy is very detrimental when the systems are all networked and the decisions are happening in local places. Technology is changing fast and furious. Competition is unpredictable. We have to go in a very different direction. A term has emerged called Leadership 4.0, which talks about how leaders and managers of decision makers need to think differently with the evolution of digital technologies. And lastly, I would say, think about it as a journey. It's not a one company, one person job. We all have to kind of go in this together. Together is not just better, but is the only way to do. And we started taking steps in that direction through various societies and committees and coming up with lots and lots of materials to share our, our, our knowledge, what we know. Johannes? You want yes, to this one, one of the upcoming new international activities on NDE 4.0 will be the first international conference. And we will start in April 2021 with a virtual conference. We will have a number, I think it is by now more than 18 invited presentations a lot of specials uh, or a special session for the national societies we will have four panel discussions to actually have some to bring all of you into it because as we said this is really a community effort it is not us doing it we have to do it together and therefore we have to get into discussions with all of us and finally in april 2022 we hopefully get all together in Munich, in Germany. Also, we worked on a lot of special issues to actually show you the content we have, um, starting with materials evaluation, going to the RNDE by Roman May, which Roman Maeve did the major work. Um, and finally, we have now the, the special issue of, of the Channel of Non-Destructive Evaluation. And this will actually just be the first special edition of the Journal of NDE. And the next one will just come around once we get to the first conference in April 2021. There is a global ambassadors program that we started under ASNT, which now has seven countries. Um, Don's representing Canada over here. Uh, we have had a series of meetings trying to develop guidance for the roadmap, which is actually very soon going to have a joint meeting with ICNDT to kind of have a shared activity again with a uh, with lot more participation from around the world. 
Uh, Johannes uh, also runs a YouTube channel. Again, free every week. He rolls out a video on NDE 4.0 content. You know, uh, I don't mind advertising because it's a piece of information that you need and it's coming to you free. So, so please grab and subscribe to this channel and, and, and you can catch up on some of the videos in the past uh, that are available, which take you deep into each of these subjects that we briefly touched today. So that's the part of the process, you know, developing technologies, developing skills, developing leadership, building community. You know, that's how we have to go. It's about process, it's about a journey, and it's about going together. That's the how piece. On the innovation side, there are four books that we have recently published. Once again, it's not for profit, so I can shamelessly advertise over here. Our NDE4 book is coming out very soon. That would be, again, an extension of what Johannes and I have just briefly touched with you today. With that, I would like to, I would like to, in the end, call out a little action or urge you to think, are you a leader? Are you a follower? Or are you going to be on the sidelines? If you want to be a leader, you need to get on top of innovation. You need chief innovation officer in your organization. If you're going to follow somebody else, you need a chief risk officer who can help identify whom to follow, when to follow, how far to follow that company or that technology and when to shift your leader. And if you want to be an observer, you need a chief prayer officer because I don't think on this train there is any way other than either being a leader or being a follower. With that, I would say thank you very much. We have enjoyed sharing with you some of the latest what we are doing and how we are bringing more information, knowledge for the awareness of the community, along with a lot of our other partners on a regular basis. With okay. that, over to Don. Well, thank you very much uh, to both of you for, uh, for a fantastic presentation. And those of you who did not know about NDE 4.0 or wanted a little bit more information on it, uh, certainly, this was a, a, a great uh, webinar to attend to get some of that information. So we do have questions open down at the bottom of the screen if you would like to ask anything. But I'll start off with a question for you both saying, how can organizations start uh, to get ready for this transition uh, in, a, in a meaningful way? It's, it's, a, it's a very... I understand that it's a complicated uh, answer, uh, but some actionable steps that organizations can take. So Don, we get that question very often, right? The first step is awareness, just like this webinar that we have done. The second step is identify the purpose. Why do you want to do it? So back to the paper that we have published in Cindy with you, right? And anywhere in the ecosystem, wherever you belong, the 10 different use cases that we talked today, which one is the right use case for your organization? It won't be all of it because there are different use cases, different value propositions for different organizations. Pick the one too so that you know why you want to do it. Now start looking at the pieces of technology that can address you and get you to where you want to be. I want to improve efficiency. I want to save the inspector from hazardous areas that we want to work on. I want to generate value out of the data we are collecting. So once you identify your why, you should be able to identify which two, three, four technologies will help you get there. Then you start looking at the timeline, right? This technology, this purpose, do I need it in the next one year? Do I need it in the next three years? How do I adopt it? It's very easy from that point onward. You need to figure out how to identify the technologies, the vendors will bring, how to clarify, how to validate that start putting it in smaller project chunks. Bring that technology in, run it as a trial basis, apply it as a pilot program somewhere. If it becomes successful, expand it, replicate it. Then bring the next technology, then bring the next technology. That's the cycle that we normally recommend. Excellent, thank you very much. M much appreciated. Um, and uh, I, I do have, uh, Another question actually related to our current climate now in, uh, you know, as we are in uh, during a pandemic and we hear a lot, necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, how, 
has this shift uh, with COVID been extremely accelerated in comparison to past shifts? I would think yes. Perhaps some people do not see it up to the moment, but if we just look into how we are working nowadays, if I look back before COVID, to have a meeting, yeah, perhaps people used the tool like Zoom, but they didn't share the video. They only shared, yeah, perhaps some, for some presentation. And now it's totally normal for all of us to go into a Zoom meeting and to share the video, to talk with everybody else. So this was the immediate change we already saw. But the others, we, we now really have to work on getting more resilient for the next pandemic happening. This will not be the last one, unfortunately. Hopefully it will be, but I don't think so. And we really have to get prepared for it. And therefore we need something like a remote NDE. We need something like, yeah, using AI to help us to do the inspection using some augmented reality to actually see what we have at some location we cannot travel to. Um, so I, I think actually this, this whole catastrophe has really changed or what it did, it took something which was already kind of urgent to get on train on board with all the digitalization but now it's not a competitive advantage anymore if you do it. If you don't do it, you will be out of business pretty soon. It's kind of like, as Rippy mostly says, like waking up after a night and about 20 years have passed. Yeah, so the digital transformation, which otherwise would have taken five years, you, you would see that in one year. It is a perfect tailwind. It's it's given it's given it a boost, and it's also demonstrated its value. People are beginning to see value in remote inspections. People are beginning to see value in artificial intelligence, even though not in the NDE context yet. But there are so many reports about how AI was able to predict the spread of pandemic globally. Right? Um, the pharmaceutical companies have not yet published all of their success stories. I mean, getting a vaccine out in nine months and the logistics of distribution, there is so much of IoT that's gone in. There is so much of high tech that went into accelerating that research. You know, those papers will be published next year and the year after. So, so some of the good things out of this will, will show up in 2021 and 2022 as people find actually time to write it up. So this has been, uh, this has been for, the transformation that had started, the pandemic accelerated that. Excellent, and we're, we're starting to get quite a few questions coming in here. Um, so we can, we can get to some of those. So uh, the first is, are the NDE personnel qualification standards catching up with the developments in NDE 4.0 requirements? And would you expect to see drastic changes in the qualification requirements to suit IIoT? I, I think that's a really good question. And there are some activities to it, but very limited up to the moment. Um, so this is, um, we, we, we try to, okay, what we have to do is kind of, we have to give NDE personnel, we have to give NDE personnel more information about about all of those emerging technologies, about the IOT, about all of this. And there are people out there which have offer such workshops. On the other side, we need to train actually the data engineers. And that is something actually our NDE education centers, they can give the data engineers some basic knowledge about the NDE. That's what they really need. And then we need something in between, and that's really the job of our universities. And I'm in process with some of them to work on this um, so that we get into an NDE data scientist. 
Rupi, do you want to say, add anything to it? Well, I, I would say this, that the community has tried to grapple with that. And there is a, we're discovering a lot of resistance and friction to doing any of those things, right? Uh, there is a subgroup within the ASNT committee to look at certification piece, qualification piece, and they have not made much progress yet. It's a problem that deserves attention that needs to be solved, and we still have to come together to accept it. Thank you very much. Um, we have another question, and then I will have a follow-up question to uh, this previous question that was asked. Uh, the nuclear industry has been a pioneer in this area, with many of the elements of NDE 4.0 already in place. However, what it is missing is in-service monitoring of the health of the components rather than uh, shutting down to inspect. Any comments about where uh, the industry is, uh, where the industry is developing remote in-service tools? So I, I'll take first part of it and maybe Johannes can help me with that. You know, we come across a lot of times people saying, we've been doing industry for it over 20 years, 25 years, what pioneer we got into. People got into the digitized piece of it, not necessarily the digital transformation piece of it. So, you know, I'm always very wary of people saying we've been doing industry 4.0 for many, many years. This, this subject is not more than five years old, seven years old. The elements were there. Yeah, the computer was there, sensor was there, actuator was there. You know, it's like a driverless car, right? Trying to say that, oh, we've been doing driverless car for 30 years. No, you had a cruise control, yes. You had other things, you had computers on the board, but that was not a driverless car. The closing of the loop between the cyber and the physical is what makes NDE 4.0 different than previous ones. Now, in terms of nuclear industry detail, I honestly do not know. I've not worked closely with anybody in the nuclear industry, uh, but the motivation to go remote inspection, yes, nuclear industry is one of those areas. The uh, gas plants, the boiler plants is another area. Confined spaces is another area. Uh, that's that's the limitation of my awareness of the uh, nuclear industry. Johannes, you have anything else that you can add to that question? Yeah, I, I know that a lot of, or, well, that some companies are working on enhanced robotics, really trying to make ro robots we can, which can go in about every location in confined spaces and spaces with enhanced radio, uh, um, radiation, and all the all of that now so but what is currently happening is yeah there is a company working on the robot to get in there with some ultrasonic or whatever system you need in there and there is a second system which produces let's say a workflow system and there's a third uh, system, uh, um, company which is producing an ai with their ultrasonic system, but those three are not working together. So what you can buy, you can either use an enhanced robotic system, or you can buy an ultrasonic system with AI processing, or you can buy a workflow system, but all three will not work together. And for me, that's really the point where we have to get to. This is the point from coming from kind of some digital solutions or digitalization to this digital transformation. So I think, yes, you are right. And nuclear industry, nuclear industry always had a lot of money. Therefore, they did a lot of development very, very early. But it wasn't this closed loop. They weren't doing this closed loop. Perhaps it was a very small one. But what we want to do now, this is not happening actually also, in, at least to my knowledge, in nuclear industry. Thank you very much. Um, before we get to uh, another question, which was, will these, uh, will the slides be available? Uh, we are working at making the entire webinar available uh, to all of our members uh, online in the new year. So please keep your eyes open for that. Um, and regarding uh, the question that I have as a follow-up uh, to the NDE qualification question, uh, what do you see as a timeline for widespread acceptance and development of, uh, you know, qualifications in NDE 
I, we, we all know that standards work at a snail's pace, very, but things very, have accelerated. Very hard to answer that question, Don. I, I, I have no control on that. I have no influence on that. And any prediction I make will be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. I, I know that, uh, you know, uh, Johannes, you're working, uh, you're, you're going to be working quite hard with the ICNDT uh, to, to start bringing up these hard questions and, and, and trying to see where exactly uh, NDE 4.0 is going. Do you have any, uh, any comment or, or do you have a roadmap or? No, uh, hopefully <laughs> within next year, we will start a work group an international work group to start putting out a plan, creating a plan, how we can get to where we need to be. Because this is something I think most of us are still trying to figure out what NDE 4.0 is about, what industry 4.0 is about. And every week I'm learning something new about NDE 4.0. And for me, that's fascinating because I am real, I'm a physicist. I always want to know something new. But if we get into education, we have to kind of have kind of a steady situation so that we can do the education. We can, yes, it makes, it makes sense that you yourself or your companies already get engaged with NDE 4.0 and really perhaps already get into booking some courses to get yourself ahead of everybody else. Perhaps you can get a coach or a consultant into your house to help you figure out, okay, those could be the steps we should be focusing on. Because most likely the tools Rippy described before, they sound easy to do, but most in most times you need somebody external like Rippy to actually help you to get there. Um, so, but Yes, we, um, I think there will be a plan for some education program out perhaps within the next year, but this will only be painting the way to where we have to go. And then we have to take on the syllabus and all of those different things. And I don't think that within the next three years, we will really have a good NDE 4.0 education by the big, pub, by the big training institute. Don, what do you what do you, do you think about it? Because I think Cindy offers courses. Uh, we do offer courses. We offer courses in the five main methods. Um, I think that this signals a fundamental shift in what NDE uh, is and what NDT education will be. So first, I think that we will have to um, we will have to see what the standards are are, are wanting. Uh, and certainly education will need to make sure that all of uh, uh, all of the right areas are hit. But as I said, this is moving from a, a very, this is a fundamental shift from, uh, you know, and, and uh, this question actually just came up. Do you consider there's a gap in the transition towards NDE 4.0 between conventional and, and advanced NDE methods uh, that was just asked here? Um, you know, and, and of course, it is absolutely a fundamental shift because we are looking at a completely different set of skills. We're looking at, uh, you know, going from a more physical, um, uh, a more physical learning to uh, a more computer based, more uh, technological learning with a lot of computer skills and programming in comparison to, uh, you know, using dipenetrant and using a mag bench. So it, it, it will certainly uh, be sent a shockwave through industry when it is, uh, when that education starts to happen in my personal opinion. Yeah, but what I think that still all the manual, all the conventional testing will be around, however, it will be necessary that even that you do a manual inspection, that you get the information from electronic systems and that you put the information back into electronic systems, that it can be processed, that it can be stored. So 
it is kind of, yes, if we would do those manual inspections, it is kind of, yeah, the human being, the thing which is actually moving the probe or doing the, the, the inspection. But you get the information using a tablet or your augmented reality and your information being stored back by pressing a button on your ultrasound instrument so that the screen is then sent back to that instrument. So I think that all those conventional manual methods will still be around, but they will be digitally. Uh, <laughs> now I cannot pronounce that word anymore. Um, they will be digitalized. Thank you. <laughs> you know, even think about the dye penetrant thing can be automated, right? There can be a lot of robotics that can take care of uh, spraying, rinsing, cleaning. And then you can have cameras taking the pictures and then you can have artificial intelligence reading those pictures and telling such and such is likely to be right, wrong or indifferent or raise the flag like governance system and say, I need human intervention. Okay, uh, some amount of human parallelism in my mind would still be required to have that validation. Some amount of human intervention must always be there to override just in case the system decides to go crazy on you, right? Uh, but is there a gap between the NDT2 methods to go to NDT4? It, no, you can actually, some methods might be amenable to going pretty quickly from that to the fourth revolution directly. You just put the whole system together in one shot, right? Uh, I grew up in India and India went from no phones to cell phones straight away, right? We, <laughs> a lot of population never got into landlines in between, right? So it's, it's possible that a direct, you know, sublimation could happen. Yeah, but what I think will be one of the major points, in a lot of cases, the NDE person is mostly now out there doing inspections by themselves. That will have to change. There will be a lot more interaction, human interaction with other groups. Because once we are going away from being just the quality assurance measure to say, is this a good or a not good part, to we as NDE becoming a data source for industry 4.0, then actually you might have to work together with a design engineer. You might have to work together with a data, a data scientist. You might have to work together with um, somebody doing the mathematical analytics of yours. So this us as NDE staying within our own box, this will change. We will have to open up to the world around us which will give us a lot of opportunities, but will also give us some challenges. And this is also, I think, one of the points our education system needs to take on, because currently, I think our education system is not that strong into actually giving us tools how to interact with all those different professions we will have to interact with in the future. If systems have to talk to systems, then people who operate and program and run the systems and the organizations who own the systems have to talk to other organizations. It's, it's going to be a bigger um, network, massive network. Okay, and uh, we are going to uh, end the webinar here. We've gone uh, just a little bit over time here uh, with quite a few questions, but uh, I wanted to thank you both once again for uh, an excellent webinar and a fantastic Q&A much appreciated um, for your time. So thank you, Dr. Johannes Vrena, and thank you, Dr. Rippy Singh, for your time here today. Uh, I will certainly certainly hope to hear from, uh, from you for another webinar in 2021. Uh, that would be wonderful. And uh, part one of their, uh, of their series uh, on NDE 4.0 is in the Cindy Journal. It was in the October, November, December 2020 issue of the Cindy Journal, and you can look forward to parts two and three coming out sometime in 2021. So with that, thank you very much for your time. Thank you everyone for attending. Happy holidays and stay safe and stay healthy. Have a wonderful day. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. And 
I hope you all will enjoy this journey to the world of indie 4.0.